Nichols joins us now to talk about a league she knows so well, the NBA. Good morning to you Good and morning. welcome back. So, the Houston Rockets won again. That's 12 out of 13. Last night they won a wild win in overtime at Oklahoma City, which did not have Shea Gilgis Alexander, and who's Chet Holmgren fouled out with about eight minutes left in the game, which was a shocker. But Jalen Green had 37 points and 10 rebounds and seven assists. And since Alpi Shingun went down, Jalen Green has averaged 32 points a game. That's in eight games. So Keyshawn, why don't you start us off here? Are we seeing the emergence of a star or even a superstar in Houston? I mean, superstar is a bit of a stretch, but you're certainly seeing a young player who's kind of coming into his own, and they, he may obviously understands with Shingun out that he's the next man up, the next guy that can give them what they're looking for. And you said the 32, well, in the last 14 games, it's 29. 28.9, I'm going to round it up. I mean, that's, that is star status. Now, could he have done that all season long if Shingun wasn't in? I don't know. I don't know, but he certainly is coming into his own. I mean, this is a, a, a young team with a couple veteran players on it that they brought in to, to Van Fleet, Brooks to kind of mm -hmm. teach them Jeff Green Jeff yeah, Green so, yeah. to mm -hmm. kind of teach yep. them how to play basketball a certain way yep. and it's working I mean they got Golden State looking over their shoulder right now <laughs> they time. better be yep I mean look could he have done this with Shangun in no no he could not have because of the spacing that is created on the floor with Shangun out and that is really the key for this team it's awesome what's happening now it's great for these guys confidence Jalen Green has been a streaky inconsistent player just to see him have those reps have those great nights out night after night that's going to be phenomenal if they can catch the Warriors and get in that play-in game that will be ahead of schedule for them and give this young team going into next season something to really stand on all that being said, they have got to figure out a way to have this greatness that they're seeing right now exist alongside the greatness that they saw from Shangun earlier this season. Because hey. a lot of it's just physical room, right? Jalen Green has more room. He does. To get around the basket Rachel, and do athletic things. It was only a couple of weeks back. I sat watching Shingun destroy Wimbanyama. He mm -hmm. destroyed him. He went for 45 on Wimby, and a bunch of them were right in Wimby's face because he's saying, I'm just going at the shot blocker. I'm going right up into his chest and mm -hmm. through him. And now you're suggesting they're, they're a little better with Jalen Green being able to be Jalen Green. Okay, so where does that leave them when their star center comes back? Because he's got a bad ankle, but I assume he's going to come you back. You just make the adjustment. And yeah. I well, think that's a big may, adjustment. But I think he's smart enough as a coach to be able to make the adjustments. Like Rachel said, maybe Jalen Green doesn't average 29 points. Maybe he starts, to, maybe when he comes back, it's 23, you know, because Shingun's back in the lineup. But this isn't really about, it's not about this year. It's about next year. This is just a building block for them to be able to now look and say, okay, we can do it. Mm -hmm. We know we could do it. And then there's a piece or two out there that they can go get next year to add to what they've already done. This ain't, because they're not going nowhere. This is the 10th spot. They're not going nowhere. Not this year. I, well, I do have a lot of faith in Ime and what he can do here, X and so wise, at these guys go oh. forward. And the culture change, too. We, we just can't forget what a big deal this is. Remember, I mean, it was not that long ago. It was a year and a half, uh -oh, a couple James years Horton. ago. <laughs> where, well, I mean, even beyond that, right? After he left and the feeling of, like, man, this team is hopeless and it's purgatory if you get set down there and yep. they don't know what they're doing and they don't know where That's they're true. going. And all of a sudden, especially with Ime coming in, because he is such a tone setter for the organization, they have become a young Scrappy team. Fred Van Vliet chose to go there. They have a team that feels like they want to be and play in the locker room for each other. So the idea that this group now goes into next season, as you said, whether it's with a play in behind them or not, that they go in thinking, we are a team where people want to be and you are going to be scared when we come out on the floor. That was a laughable sentence just two seasons ago. Yeah. So even approaching that right now is huge. All right. So back to Jalen Green. You guys are obviously weren't on the show back when, but before his draft, mm -hmm. we went back and forth and back and forth for a month about Jalen Green or Cade Cunningham. And I was all about Jalen Green because he's so much more offensively explosive than Cade can be. Cade's a more all-around better, maybe basketball player. Although, last night, when 
Oklahoma City started to double Jalen Green in the second half, and especially in overtime. He had to give up the ball. He can pass the basketball. He has some feel for the game that I didn't know he had when I watched G League Ignite back in the day. So the point is, he is a wildly explosive scorer. And he just off, I, I start to compare him because it's the only thing I have. It's to Ant-Man. So we have Anthony Edwards and Jalen Green. He, he's a little more offensively skilled to me at this point than Anthony is. Just, just naturally offensive skilled. But Anthony is so much bigger and stronger because Jalen Green plays like he's six seven. Because you don't talk about jump out of the gym. Obviously, right. so can Anthony. But they only list Jalen Green at six four. I thought he was six. I looked it up, <laughs> and, and he's six four. He, he weighs like one eighty five. He still he does not have his man body quite yet. Mm -hmm. Anthony Edwards weighs 225, so that's like plus 40 pounds. So he's playing with a lot more force than Jalen is able to. But listen, Jalen can just flat out skywalk. And over these eight games without Shingun, he's making 48% of his threes. Is that going to hold? Is that going to be a constant going forward? Well, he's highly capable because he's got natural, easy stroke with it. So I, I think we're looking at a star for sure here. He, you know, when when you get into a rhythm and you're shooting threes, he's able to do that now. That wasn't necessarily it, it the case. It was not the case. It wasn't the case before. He, he would hesitate. So if he well, needs, well the, the offense was going through Shingun. Yeah, but time. if he needs to revert back to that, at least he knows and they know he's capable of shooting deep if he needs to. So I'm not, I wouldn't worry about it, it reverting back to what they did with Shingun because, again, I think Ime knows, hey, I got something special here. Well, look, here's what I would say about Jalen Green. What he's shown us so far is his trajectory is not just like this, right? It's going to be like yeah. this. And what you hope is that it eventually trends yeah, upward. I would not expect, I hope that he's this hot through the rest of the season because it's a great story and it's great for his confidence and he's a fun player to watch. If it doesn't, if toward the end of the season it starts to peter off, I'm not going to be shocked. Yeah. If next season he's sort of a little bit more like this again, I'm not going to be shocked either. I don't think this is, oh, my gosh, Jalen Green has made this amazing step forward. He'll never go back. I think he is showing himself and the rest of us what he is capable of, and I would expect more of that in the future, just maybe not every game from here on out for okay. the rest of time. So, to me, the real star of this show is the coach, yes. and you know the coach. And I have carefully watched this coach since he sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty for all those years in San Antonio. <laughs> and look at him now. He is such a commanding officer. He looks the part. He acts the part. And he has changed everything about the way they play basketball. He, he is, he's a guy I would love to play for and are you with me, Rachel? Yeah. Feedback on what you've seen from Ime in charge. A hundred percent. Look, we saw it in Boston, right? Yeah. I mean, we saw what he did in Boston, and not just what he accomplished in terms of the guys on the court, but the way they toward him in the locker room, off the court, in the hallway. You could tell the respect they had for him. Yes. It was obviously controversial when he left. To Ime's credit, he definitely has talked about, hey, learning from his experiences, yeah. just like everybody else, and that he is becoming a pillar in that organization in Houston in the way that they hoped that he he would be. And again, the players have so much respect for him. And you know, Skip, that in this league, with this level of talent, those guys have to believe. And he's given them a place to go, a belief. And it is a great example of with a team that is not all young, right? Yeah, but some not. young, yeah. to a degree young, to have a disciplined first coach, which he is, a defensively oriented coach, which he can be, and somebody who says, great, here is some clarity. Here is what you are supposed to do. Here is where you are supposed to be. And here's the guy who's going to be there for you in return. That is one of his strengths. And we have seen that on the court pay out. It, it all boils down to the respect level. I was going to say that, Rachel, they, they respect him. And the fact that they respect him, they do for him. And they do the right things. He puts them in the right situation. They trust him. When you look at the great coaches in professional sports, people trust them. All of them, across yeah. the board. Even if you went down to Miami, they trust him. Right? You look at you look at Ty Lu, they trust him. Mm -hmm. They just trust what they're saying, what they're giving them, and you're looking at it with email right now, right in front.